All right, Keegan rolled up. Full plate today. I'm just gonna kind of bring you along. It's gonna be pretty interesting. We're gonna start with a very heavy, very inconveniently placed dumpster. Uh, I have to be over there right by it. So I'm gonna help Keegan load it before I get on to what I need to do. See, this parking lot is small. I mean, look at that. I think Keegan's gonna get it. We just might have to do like three or four point turn here. Uh, but yeah, this was rented by the Amish. Super nice guy, easy to work with. I say that kind of, but man, he stuffed it. He just put this new roof on. About working with the Amish is everything runs entirely slow and the communication is awful. Uh, he ended up wanting to keep it another day and everything is like phone call based because they don't text, they don't email, everything has to be done on paper. Uh, super honest, they'll always cut a check without asking a question, but in terms of communicating, it's sometimes terrible because they won't pick up the phone and then they'll call you like 5 a.m. the next day or 6 a.m. the next day when they get up and check their phone like once a day. So all your communication is one day behind, but I don't mind working with them at all. So this thing is gonna be very heavy though. That's why you always have a broom in your truck because there are nails everywhere. They kind of made a mess to be honest. I decided to jump in 10 point turn or at least lined up. Think about customer service too and customer satisfaction. So this bicycle shop let these people use the lot so they because they don't have a driveway but i am going to reach out to uh, the bicycle shop because i actually get a lot of work done from them but i want them to know that my company didn't make the mess that was here because there are there's nails everywhere i'm gonna like kind of sweep it up but at the same time it's not my job they need to call the contractor back to clean this up so it's always something i jumped in the truck and helped him back that in and when i did i accidentally had the keys on my hip to this truck and then I left him in his truck and he's already taken off and I would rather him keep his momentum So I'm gonna find a way to get to my house real quick grab some spares and Come back to this truck. It is always something. I swear. It's never easy. Never an easy perfect day All right, so that was a long walk, but I did just change my clothes uh, I got the truck picked up. We're all good. I did get a call from Keegan. It is incredibly hot He even said he's about to go change his clothes because he's just drenched but the cool thing is we had kind of a mess of a situation. When you work with third party dumpster companies uh, where basically they're finding people who need dumpsters by advertising online and then they call somebody like me to go drop off a dumpster and then they mark up the price. Well, we had a scheduled pickup which they marked as an automatic pickup. So that means we left it there for a week and then it was automatically scheduled to be picked up. Well, we show up and of course the contractor says, hey, can I keep it longer? And I said, uh, no because this is way outside of our regular area and i said well i mean you can if you want but i'm gonna have to charge for a dry run fee and i'm gonna have to charge you for the additional week and the guy's like well i mean figure out what the price is so much back and forth with the third party and then i'm like uh basically the guy's like you know what never mind it's really not that big a deal i just kind of then pulled him to the side and went look this is a third party if you ever want to work with me by yourself just call us directly that kind of stuff happens and I hate giving a customer a bad experience. But the good thing is it was so far outside of our area that I charged a kind of a premium for it. Then Keegan goes to go load it and he looks in it all metal, 100% metal dumpster. So they apparently were tearing out the edging that goes around a like track, like a high school track, all metal. And I said, dude, you're not going to be tearing that or, or taking that to the landfill. Just take it straight to the scrapyard and then come and drop it off at the next drop off. So yeah, that worked out really well. I, I mean, gotta love a day like that. I mean, that's literally a 100% profit dumpster. Very little overhead because all of that dump fee will probably come out ahead. All right, guys. So we're rolling up here to the scrapyard. Go weigh in. And see how much we get off this dumpster. Stay tuned. There she goes. Got it all emptied out. Time to put down the trailer and let's go see how much money this thing brings us. All right, so this day's gone pretty well and I can't complain too much. The cool thing is 
A lot of you guys tote the idea of working harder. You brag about working harder than everybody else. And typically that means you're putting in a lot of hours. You guys need to really shift your mindset. You need to learn to leverage your time. So a lot of guys will go on brand, oh, I can, I'll outwork you, I'll outwork you, hours, 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 all the gurus and everything. But here's the deal. It's not about outworking people, but outsmarting people and outsmarting time. Think about it this way. Keegan's out there basically managing the empties, the drop-offs, and I basically just kind of direct him. But he handles it. In the meantime, I just went to the gym. And don't just take this as a, oh, I just go screw off all day while I have somebody run my business. That's not the case. But sometimes I get an opportunity to kind of like decompress, which is important when you run a business because at the end of the day, the stress level can get insanely high. But while I was at the gym, I simply sent a couple emails uh, to try to leverage again that time, leverage my income. So I just got approved for storage out at the shop and proved I, I'm basically gonna capture a loan on the equity of some of the apartments I have to build storage out by my shop. Now tell me that's not a pretty big move while other people are working, you know, 18 hours a day. I did it with one email. So on top of that, I also took phone calls, booked a couple additional dumpsters and sourced another dumpster because I started turning people away this week. So that means it's time for another dumpster. Add it to the inventory. So I did all of that while I was at the gym or, you know, the gym in this morning while somebody else was, you know, taking care of the operations of the business. Leverage your time. Don't try to spend so much time in your business, especially as you grow. It'll just basically peak if you always work that way. You need to work on your business, learn to leverage your time and your money. My little tidbit tip. I also want to take a moment. I don't want to seem like I'm bragging about this. Like this is how I have been taught by others. They have given me this advice and I'm trying to give it to you. It is not about how many hours you put into your day. It truly isn't. You can work and especially if you ever had a desk job, you know that there were days that you could sit there for four hours screwing off and then turn around and knock out a project in 45 minutes. But you took all day to do it because you did other things, right? This is kind of the same concept when running a business. You have the opportunity to make sizable gains in growth by making educated moves. So stop trying to satisfy yourself by working hard. There are days where I just kind of sit around and I don't necessarily work in the business. And then I, I get down on myself and I'm like, ah, I didn't get anything done today, like nothing. But then you sit down and you go, wait a second. Had I just made one educated move, it would have been pretty good, right? You can make one educated move in one hour that can set into motion years of wealth rather than putting in hours and hours of work for hours and hours of money. That makes sense. All right, so we're now out at the shop. If you guys follow the channel, you know about this place. We've pretty much wrapped up the dumpsters for the day, uh, but now, like I talked about early, earlier, we got that approval. So we're out here, we're just gonna get an idea of our measurements, and then I'm gonna actually have a buddy who I think I'm gonna have lay the concrete come in with like a laser and a wheel to get us some pretty accurate measurements. But we basically have all of this gravel out here to work with. And I'm gonna start in one corner. That way, as we grow, we can build it this way. But as you can see, Keegan's hanging out in the shade because it's like 104 degrees right now. So we're not gonna be here very long. All right, so we're hanging out under the only tree on my property, literally the only one, uh, trying to stay relatively cool. So I'm gonna kind of point over here you might be able to see that little block of wood over there in that general direction. But here, turn it around. All right, so there's one corner there. There's the other corner on that side. There's a corner down there and a corner there. These are very rough estimates of what this layout's going to look like. But I have more room out here than I thought. We did a like aerial GPS view before. That is a 30 by 60 building. We could essentially get 14 or so units in there of various sizes. And then the idea is to build that one first and then put another one here. And then on this side, we'd have one big long covered parking space for people. So I like that idea over here a lot. And the cool thing is there should still be a little bit of gap in between here, 
where I can decide if I want to pop up a third one of those or make that longer based on the demand. So we're going to try to figure that out as well. All right, here's our medieval technique. That's the far corner of the second row. So here's the other corner of it. And then between it, we have about 25 feet before you get to the corner that's over there by that piece of wood and over here by this. Again, 30 feet this way, 60 feet that way, 25 foot gap between. That would be essentially the concrete pads and the mini storage. And then we have all of this over here to work with. The other option was to do one big row from that corner to like midway over there of a 100 by essentially 30 foot storage. But it would almost have to go in the center because again, we need 25 feet on both sides before we can build another one. And I don't know if I can fit both here. And that's what we're gonna call that guy to really double check. All right, and then from here to there, right about where that tree is, there's a block on the ground right there, that last block you see, that's 125 feet roughly, where we would either build a back wall here and you'd have covered trailer parking, probably about 12 spots, or we scoot it farther towards the middle if there's enough room and you'd have parking on both sides and it'd just be just a covered roof that people can park on both sides. The only problem is, I don't know if there's enough room for people to come around the building and then back into their spot. That'd be the one thing I've got to figure out. Anybody in the comments, maybe give me an idea. So we got a lot to think about. I'm gonna meet that other guy out here later with some lasers and better measuring equipment. He's gonna give me a better idea and maybe give me an opinion. And then we'll plot the fence that we wanna build. Dollar General, which is coming over where that restaurant is if you follow the channel, uh, they actually agreed to build me a nice privacy privacy fence along Something our like proxy like privacy privacy fence uh, a privacy fence around uh, or between our properties, which would be nice because then we can actually put our dumpsters basically against it, and it'll probably be a pretty pretty clean look, and then we can tap the fence off of that, the chain link, all the way around the property and secure it, which is the biggest thing people want. I truly feel like when it comes to storage. Uh, when I first popped this place up and said that it was going to become storage, everybody's question was, when is the fence coming up? I was like, oh, I guess it will be soon. Bye, Rolling Ops headquarters. We still need to destroy that car somehow. All right. Keegan already left for the day. It's not even quite 4 o'clock, but of course, there's not as many people using dumpsters today. He took off. He's got some things he wanted to get taken care of. In the meantime, I'm actually going to jump in the truck one more time. I'm going to get one dumpster loaded so that he can get it immediately emptied in the morning into a contractor. So I'm not all the way out of the truck. I mean, we got two of them. So we're always running. What I wanted to talk about real quick is just, you know, recap this whole thing. I believe in leverage. And you guys have seen that, I hope, in my channel before. I believe in leveraging my time and my money. So I have a six unit apartment building. You can look back in the video. Uh, I got that because I sold multiple small properties that I had to buy that six unit. So when I did that, I realized the consolidation of a foundation and having six units at one place versus having, you know, six units between six foundation, way easier to operate. Not only that, I believe in you make their money at the purchase, not at the sale. If I can buy it cheap enough, I can leverage that equity. And what I did was I took that six unit apartment building and I went to the bank and said, hey, this thing's worth a lot more than what I paid for. I wanna buy my shop. I bought the shop without having to spend a dime. You can watch the video where I talked about how I did that, but I did it by literally just signing a piece of paper and utilizing the equity. Now what I'm doing is utilizing all of my combined equity uh, between you know three different properties I own to now build the storage. After I build the storage, I will also increase my equity again and it literally becomes monopoly money. And that is what I really want people to understand. You can build long-term wealth without always having to empty out all of your cash. The thing that took me the longest to learn though was learning to leverage my time. It was really hard for me to give up parts of my business to the point that I worked way too long by myself in my business. I'm utilizing my time by using contractors to take care of work that I normally would have done myself. 
using Keegan to run some of my dumpsters, which he's been incredible at. Uh, I've taught him and hopefully I get to teach somebody else soon and we have more than you know, two trucks running and maybe three, one for myself part-time and two for people running full-time. Before you jump in the comments and go, oh, it must be nice having daddy's money or, oh, it must be nice to be able to buy these cheap houses or, you know, be a, uh, like a slumlord, I really would like you to do some digging into some of my past videos where I actually go into detail and tell you exactly how I did it because it's not as hard as people make it seem. And there are literally people out there who have been quoted to keep others poor. This is information you can, you know, dig up online. I'm not gonna try to be a guru, tell you it works everywhere, or you know, in a certain, certain situation. Quincy, Illinois, not the same time, like same as California. It's, it's gonna be different, that's all there is to it. But I will tell you that I did my first two rental properties by living in them. Three and a half percent interest. And some of you guys have heard me talk about this before, but I really want people to grasp this. I bought a duplex and I lived on one side. The other side nearly paid all of my living expenses and my mortgage. Then when I moved out of that, I moved 100 miles away and I was able to buy another one because of a rule where on an FHA mortgage with only three and a half percent down, you can relocate to another location 100 miles away and buy another one using another FHA mortgage. And I just bought another duplex and did the same thing again. Eventually sold both those properties and then bought into bigger stuff. So it is very possible without using daddy's money, without getting private loans, without, you know, coming into inheritance. You guys should really look into it. Let's wrap this rant up. Learn to leverage your time. Learn to let things go. If you're gonna try to build a business, you just gotta learn to let it go. And then keep focusing on the things that will continue to grow your business. Let other people Take care of the things that operate your business, if that makes sense. So you can focus on things that will keep growing the business so you can pay for the people that operate your business and, you know, put a little bit of money in your pocket. Learn to leverage your income or the money you bring into your business. I like to reinvest as much as I possibly can. And that's what I'm doing. And also learning to try to invest the equity that you have rather than the cash that you have. Again, everybody's situation is gonna be different. I'm just trying to not necessarily influence anybody, but maybe educate and get your brain going on different ways to build a business rather than always saving a little bit of money and then spending it and then being poor again. I will tell you what, there's not anybody in the history of ever who has ever became rich. And I mean, sure, like truly, truly rich. I'm not rich yet, let's be very clear. But truly rich saving their paycheck. Nobody, never, ever has just literally saved every paycheck or a percentage of every paycheck and just became a huge successful person. They reinvested that time and money to grow it at a significant rate. I mean, yeah, you can say, you know, somebody got a private contracting job or whatever, or, you know, they had a really, really good income, but they lived off their existing income. They lived within their budget. They didn't become wealthier because they made decisions that amplified that income. Just think about that. And I hope to catch you guys in one of the next videos. I know this is more of just a talking one. We're not doing anything crazy, but hopefully if you subscribe, you'll see some more of that as well. And you know what? This channel just might give you some ideas. Again, this is never me trying to tell you to become a trash man, a dumpster business, or invest in rentals. It's just something to give you some ideas about. Catch you next time, hit that subscribe button.